questions 18 to 23 in the ASAP purple paper. Question 18. So we're essentially asked to find the number of isomers in um, structures 2 and 3 if they were monosubstituted. So monosubstituted molecules are molecules um, in which one hydrogen has been replaced by another atom or functional group. And isomers are two uh, or more compounds with the same chemical formula but a different arrangement of atoms in the molecules. So in the end what we have is three isomers for structure two and one isomer for structure three. The only thing you need to be careful about is uh, mistaking a the identical slash same molecule for an isomer of another one. So for example, um, with structure three, uh, if we have a molecule that looks like this, this is not an isomer of this one because if you rotate this carbon around to the um, this position, you'll find that this molecule is actually identical to this one. So these are not isomers. So, so if you just bond the functional group to various carbons, You'll hopefully find all the possible combinations of isomers and hopefully you'll find that there are three isomers for structure two and one isomer for structure three. So therefore C is the correct answer for question 18. Question 19. How many different disubstituted isomers can be produced from structure one? So I've just listed slash drawn all of the uh, possible isomers for structure one when it's disubstituted. It's all on the screen. There's six of them and D is the correct answer therefore for question 19. Question 20. So in question 20 we're looking for the structure in which the monosubstituted product has just one isomer and the disubstituted product has two isomers. We can immediately rule out structure one because in the stem it states that there are two possible isomers for a monosubstituted product of structure one. Um, so therefore we can rule it out as there are too many possible isomers for the monosubstituted product. Um, structure two we can also rule out because we found before um, that structure two has actually three possible isomers for the monosubstituted product. So therefore we can rule out structure two. So we're left with structure three and structure four. So the all the isomers for the monosubstituted and disubstituted products are shown on the screen. Um, whilst both structure three and structure four for the monosubstituted product both have only one isomer as required by the question. Um, only structure four has two isomers for the disubstituted product, whilst structure three has four uh, possible isomers for the disubstituted product. So um, the correct answer for question 20, therefore, is C. Question 21. So the trick to answering question 21 is to look at the carbons that are being attached to the respective functional groups. So we've got these tri-substituted structures and um, in the case of structure five, the following carbons are attached to the um, X. And that is this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. So if you sort of just connect the dots between all the, um, the highlighted carbons, you can see we're getting this L sort of shape for me. So if we want to figure out whether um, any of the other structures, structure six, structure seven, structure eight are the same, we should just try and look for this sort of pattern going on. So in structure six, uh, we've got this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. And if we um, just connect the dots, we can see that again, we've got this L shape. So that sort of suggests that um, it might be possible to rotate this structure into this structure. And indeed, if you um, sort of can just rotate it in your mind, then you'll actually see that structure five and structure six are the same. So um, moving on to structure seven though, structure seven has the following carbons 
um, as the ones that attach to the functional group. So it's these. So the issue is if we try and join up all the carbons, the highlight carbon in this one, we find that we actually um, can't do it as easily because this carbon here, the one on the tip, does not directly join up to these other carbons. So whilst before we have this nice L shape going on, we actually have this sort of disjointed shape. And what this sort of means is that um, structure seven is very different from structure six and structure five in terms of how it's made, and therefore they are not equivalent structures. So structure seven is not equivalent to structure six and structure five, but structure five and structure six are equivalent. Finally, we've got structure eight. So we've got these carbons. Again, we're forming this L shape, and you'll find that if you try and rotate this in your mind, um, it will actually rotate to form uh, structure six and structure five. So structures eight, uh, six, and five, they are all equivalent, but structure seven is not. So therefore the correct answer for question 21 is B. Question 22, how many different trisubstituted isomers can be produced from structure four? So there are two different trisubstituted structures that can be uh, formed from structure four, and those are the two on the screen. So the first one is the one where there's two, um, functional groups on one side and one on the other. And the other one is where there are three, all three functional groups are all on the one carbon. So therefore the correct answer for question 22 is B. Question 23. So in question 23, we've basically got to figure out whether um, structures two and structures three will have stereoisomers if they are both disubstituted. So stereoisomers are possible if there is a chiral carbon. Now, a chiral carbon is a carbon that is attached to four unique groups. So chiral carbon can exist in structure three. The All the carbons in structure three are sp3 hybridized, i.e. they can form four um, bonds with four groups. And if we die substitute this uh, molecule, a chiral carbon will form. So these carbons, are chiral carbons. Um, but whilst a chiral carbon can exist in structure three, they cannot exist in structure two as all the carbons in structure two are sp2 hybridized. So i.e. they can only each one to three groups, not four, only three, as every carbon uh, in structure two has a double bond. So you can see that pretty clearly here, every single carbon has a, um, has a double bond. So even if we say attach this um, functional group to this carbon, it can only form a bond with three groups as it has this double bond. So therefore the correct answer for question 23 is B.